Brucham Aboyim, thank you very much for attending, and again, welcome to our home. The um, this Saturday night, uh, the topic again today, I'm sorry, is the Book of Ruth. Um, this Saturday night, we will begin to celebrate the holiday of Shavuot. This is a holiday in which we commemorate the fact that we became Jewish and that we received the Torah from God Almighty Himself on Mount Sinai. <clears throat> there are very few laws that are unique to this holiday other than the general laws and prohibitions that are connected with all the major holidays. Uh, there's no matzah to eat uh, or a sukkah that we must dwell in. <clears throat> there are certain customs that the nation has accepted upon themselves such as staying up all night, studying the Torah, and in many communities the recitation of the poem of Akdomus. There is also a custom to eat a milk meal. Now this is unusual in Judaism since our sages tell us, Ain Simcha believe Busser, that there is no joy without meat. So many Jewish communities also have the custom of reading from the Book of Ruth. One may wonder, uh, what connection is there between the holiday that celebrates the giving of the Torah and the Book of Ruth? Abbasera said that the Book of Ruth contains neither laws of purity or impurity, nor does it teach us about the precepts of things which are forbidden or, or permitted. The question you must ask is, why was it written? He answers because of loving kindness to teach us how greatly God Almighty rewards those who perform acts of kindness. It also teaches us that learning Torah without performing acts of kindness is not enough. Anyone who says, all I have is Torah, guess what? Doesn't even have Torah. Ruth is read on the holiday of Shavuot to teach us that the Torah is only given and retained through affliction and poverty. It also teaches us how much God Almighty loves converts, as it states in the book of Devarim in the portion of Akeb, the Ahavtem Es Hager, and you shall love the convert. Now this commandment is stated 36 times in the Torah. When the children of Israel stood at the foot of Mount Sinai to receive the Torah, well, they were all on the level of Gerim, converts. So based on these facts on Shvot, we read about Ruth, uh, the ultimate convert, the ultimate care. Another reason that we learn, that another lesson that we learn, pardon me, from the book of Ruth, is that righteous women are more than equal to righteous men. In addition, we are taught about the laws of charity, especially during the harvest season. Now, the Alter Rebbe, the founder of Chabad Hasidus, states in his Magnus Opus, the book of Tanya, that charity is the one mitzvah more than any other that will bring the Mashiach, the Messiah, may come quickly and in our time. Now the book of Ruth was authored by Shmuel Hanavi, by Samuel the prophet. Now one reason given as to why he wrote it was to validate King David's right to enter into the nation of Israel. Now, the Torah commands us We're taking a pause for technical difficulties. Interruption. <clears throat> Thank you for your patience. Again, sorry about the interruption. So, 
the Book of Ruth was authored, and we'll start from there again, just to return, that the Book of Ruth was authored by Shmuel HaNavi, Samuel the prophet. One reason given as to why he wrote it was to validate King David's right to enter into the nation of Israel. The Torah portion, the Torah commands us in the Book of Devarim, in Deuteronomy, in the portion of Kisese, that we are not permitted to accept a Moabite as a convert to Judaism. However, the sages adjudicated that this restriction of not allowing a Moabite to become a convert was limited to male members of the nation of Moab, so it therefore did not include female members. Over the course of time, this law was forgotten. It was only during the period of Boaz and his court that this law was reinstituted. This allowed Boaz to marry Ruth, who was descended from the nation of Moab. Another opinion stated as to why the book was written was to publicize the wonders of God Almighty in creating the possibility of salvation of mankind through the light of Mashiach Sinkeno, of the Messiah, who was a, a, the illustrious descendant of King David, may he come quickly and in our time. David's ancestry began with Yehuda's unlikely tryst with his daughter-in-law Tamar, which gave birth to Peretz, David's grandfather. In addition, it seemed that Yishai, David's father, questioned the validity of the decision by Boaz that his court and his court of allowing a Moabitess to convert to Judaism. Based on his concern, he separated from his Jewish wife. He then freed his non-Jewish maidservant and took her as his wife. Now, Yishai's first wife, who had bore him seven sons, wanted more children from her righteous husband. So she convinced the maidservant who Boaz had married to allow her to enter into the marital bed without Yishai's knowledge. This scenario was much like the night that Yaakov, our father, spent with Leah, thinking that in reality he was with Rachel, with Rachel. From this union, she became pregnant and gave birth to David. So David spent the first 27 years of his life as an outcast since Yishai, his father, did not acknowledge David as his true son. It was not until Shmuel HaNavi, till Samuel the prophet who was sent by the command of God to anoint a king from amongst one of Yishai's sons, that the truth about David was finally revealed. To everyone's surprise, even Shmuel, David was anointed to be the next king of Israel. Now, Ruth's origins were also clouded in chains. She was descended from the incestuous relationship recorded in the book of Genesis in the portion of Vaera between Lot and his eldest daughter. From this story we see that salvation can come at any time to anyone and from the least likely of places. The book of Ruth is the smallest of the 24 books that comprise the written Torah referred to as Tanakh, which is an acronym for Torah, Nevi'im, and Kesuvim. The number 24 is a composite of the five books of the Torah, the eight books of the prophets, and the 11 books of the writings. The evil inclination is trying to get in the midst of this. Again, I apologize for the interruption. So the book of Ruth contains only 85 verses. Now, 85 is the gematria, the numerical value of the Hebrew word peh, which means mouth. 
And just as the mouth reveals that which is hidden within a person's mind, so too the book of Ruth, as a book of instruction, reveals many hidden lessons that we can glean from. From Abimelech, we learn that there is justice in the world. From Naomi, we learn that there is forgiveness. From Machlon and Kilion, two sons, we learn that God always gives us an opportunity to tshuva, to repent. From Orpah and Ruth, we learn that a good beginning is not enough. One must have the strength of character to stay the course. From Boaz, we learn many positive traits, such as the trait of charity, and to never abandon family, and to always do what is right in the eyes of God Almighty. Not just doing them, but performing them all with an alacrity. And then from Plony Valmoni, we learned that many times God gives us opportunities in life, but we have to be wise enough to take advantage of the moment. It's also interesting that his name is not mentioned. Plony Valmoni means someone. Again, that there's no mitzvah to name a person who has done something that may be not quite right. Shavuos is a time of hope a time for us to grow on all levels. The only way that we can accomplish this goal is by connecting ourselves to the Torah and its principles. They are the conduit to both spiritual and sexual successes. Now, we learn this lesson clearly through the story of Ruth. These lessons that she learned, she succeeded in passing on to her great-grandson, Devonamela, King David. He, in turn, was able to employ them to elevate himself to the highest level of dedication and spirituality. Through his tireless efforts, he merited to join with our forefathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in becoming part of what we call the Markava, the chariot of God Almighty. And just like it was Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, who gave us the five books of the Torah, on Shavuos, and when he went up to the when he went up to the mountain, so too was Dovinamel, King David, who gave us the five books of Tehillim, of Psalms. Since he was born and died on the holiday of Shavuos, it is customary for us to read Tehillim, the book of Psalms on the Shianta. May Hashem bless us all that we have both the wisdom and the ability to both learn and internalize the lessons that we read in both the Torah of Moshe and the book of Psalms authored by King David. And with that, may we merit to usher in the coming of David's illustrious descendant, the Sheikh Stikano. May he come quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for listening. Um, may God bless you again all with happiness, health, and good fortune. And again, <clears throat> may you find the Kabbalah Satora, the receiving of the Torah on this Shavuos, this Saturday night. And uh, may be a time that we all are able to connect as one new unit, one nation, in the coming of Mashiach to bring him so that next year, okay, we'll celebrate this in the temple in the Yerushalayim. Again, may come quickly in your time. Thank you very much for attending. God bless you all. Shabbat Shalom.